I am joined today by the UFC heavyweight champion of the world in Ohio's own Stipe Miocic. Stipe, what's going on, man? How's everything? Good, brother. Good, brother. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I appreciate uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Obviously, I know you're a very busy guy with everything happening in uh, in Cleveland. Obviously, I'm in Ohio, so I know what uh, what is going on. How is uh, how is everything going with uh, with your family and kind of being in lockdown for this last year, basically two months? Uh, you know, it's uh, it sucks. You know, just trying to be safe and being smart and you know, find a, <clears throat> following the guidelines. And as you know, Ohio is one of the stricter states with a lot of uh, restrictions, uh, restrictions, and what's going on with us at home orders and stuff like that. But it's getting better, it's starting to open up again, hopefully. And you know, I'm just uh, you know, sucks. I'm just making sure that my family's safe first and uh, first thing first. But uh, you know, working the fire station, you know, isn't too crazy. It's you know, just, uh, just you know, take it day by day, but, you know, just praying that no one gets sick and everyone stays healthy. Yeah. How is it, you know, being a first responder on the front lines? I mean, I've talked to, you know, a couple guys in New York. I've talked to a couple people in California. Uh, obviously, every state, every city is a little different, but how has that been for you? Because you work as a firefighter and you also work with the paramedic team, right? Yeah, yeah. We're all, we're all one. Um, you know, you have, you have both certifications. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, we're just doing it you know, a little bit more um, – I guess we're more cautious of what we do, and we uh, instead of just wearing, sorry, instead of just wearing gloves, uh, you know, we have to we wear uh, gloves with N95 masks, uh, goggles, and we have to wear gowns. Yeah, I know when you work as a firefighter, it's already kind of you have to have a certain mentality to do that because it's scary to literally walk into a burning building, but. Is it scary, you know, working with, with you know, around this virus? I mean, it's like the silent killer. You you get around it, you know. There, and we hear about all the stories about how people are getting it in the most bizarre ways. You're not, you know, people are being cautious and still getting it. So has it been kind of scary being on the front lines of that? Yeah, because you just never know. Um, you know, it's like the flu. You just don't know. You out of nowhere, and uh, just you know, you got to do everything you can to make sure you're being safe about everything and. Just, just hoping and praying that, you know, we know if it's get it. I just, I'm just hoping that, you know, our family doesn't get it. You know, that's all I'm looking out for. Yeah. Now, have you, as part of your work, do they do they, do they require you guys to go through testing or anything? Like, have you actually been tested for COVID-19? And uh, we, uh, we usually have to walk in and check our temperature, make sure uh, our temperature isn't ele- elevated and stuff like that. And if we do feel, feel like or achy or some of the symptoms, you know, we have to stay home. And I assume you've been feeling okay. Yeah, so far so good. So, yeah, I mean, knock on wood. Yeah, I imagine that's also. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you have to come home to your wife and and, and your child every day. I mean, that's also got to be a concern, right? I mean, there's no way to avoid that concern. Yeah, there's no question. That's all I think about. It. Make sure that I, you know, I don't do anything to put harm's way in my for my family and because of what I do. Um, so just you know, like I said, just being smart. You know, wash my hands, keep my distance, and wear a mask when I have to. Yeah. Uh, before we get to all the fight stuff, let me ask because we haven't had a chance to catch up in a little while since you've obviously had the uh, the eye surgery. Uh, how is the vision doing now? I know it was a pretty serious uh, situation with a torn retina. I'd heard, and again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the severity of the injury, from my understanding, was is there was a, there was a threat to your vision as a whole. Like you could have lost vision out of this. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, if I kept getting punched in the face, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think eventually, you know, as you get older, but. Uh, it was definitely torn in that spots, and you know, it was a little bit more than I thought would thought, thought it would get better. It never did, and uh, you know, I had got you know a procedure done, got my eye fixed, and uh, you know, it's still, it's better, a lot, a lot better. And uh, so, you know, just uh, I guess take it day by day, and just praying that uh, it stays that way. Yeah. I remember talking to Michael Bisping when he went through his eye surgeries. I'm sure you've heard this story a thousand times, you know, when he had, you know, a couple of really serious eye surgeries and now, you know, where he's at. I mean, is that one of those things where you just have to kind of face and move on? Like, because obviously your vision is important. You want to be able to see later in life, but obviously this is the career you go through. So I guess you take certain inherent risks to go along with it. But is that is that also a scary thing to think about? Just because, again, you, you don't, you're not going to get another eye. Yeah, yeah, you know, listen, uh, I'm asking my daughter with two eyes instead of one. <laughs> so, but like I said, uh, so we're good so far. So, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, keep grinding away and just hopefully nothing happens again. Yeah. If the, you, you mentioned on Twitter, obviously, the torn retina it wouldn't have happened. You would have already been back. Has that been the toughest part about anything is is knowing that, because you went through two different surgeries, right? 
No, just one. Oh, just one. Okay, so you went to the surgery. Yeah. But, but there's no. But but obviously, it's one of those things like you can't come back with fifty percent vision. No, no, no. It, uh, yeah, no. It it, uh, it was like it was not even surgery. It was more of a procedure that it was weird. Like it just how he did it, it was awkward. But it's like something new they were doing, and it worked. Thank God. And you know, I you know, I did I would back way earlier, but I just uh, you know. And he's like, listen, dude. He's like, you definitely heard it. And he's like, I don't want you to get any extreme, extreme, you know, workouts or anything crazy. I, just, I really want you to just, like bear back and you know, you know, bring it back down and don't be an idiot, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So now, where you're at right now, like, obviously, I know you have to wear glasses now. Uh, so you've kind of joined my my four eyes club, Steve. Eh? I'm, I'm proud of you for that. Uh, but but how is the vision today? Like, are you okay? Are you still seeing spots? Like, how is the vision right now? Uh, no, definitely, definitely way, 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 way better. I'm definitely, uh, yeah, I hear spots here and there, but nothing, I, I don't think it's the uh, ordinary. Um, I need glasses in general, if uh, whether rented or not. I need them to get them to Best thing I did was get them. Yeah, yeah. So now, with that being said, where we're at in Ohio, I know they've they've recently announced that they're going to start opening gyms again on May 26. But we haven't heard all the restrictions being lifted for the gyms on May 26. I assume, or from what I've heard, you know, it's going to be a lot of the social distancing orders. You know, I don't think anyone's going to be doing any wrestling or, or jujitsu right away. But obviously, that's yeah. kind of where you've been stuck. So where where are you right now in terms of your gym? Because obviously, I know Strong Style is your home, and I can't imagine you're going to open a gym in your garage. Uh, so kind of where are you at right now with, with these stay at home orders. I think it's like I said, May twenty sixth. I think is when it's being lifted, at least partially for gyms. Yeah, I mean, right now, uh, Dewine Governor Dewine said that uh, you know, fitness centers get open, but there's like distancing, there's no contact, and so we'll we'll see. I mean, I, I'm just gonna keep hoping and you know, hopefully everything works for you know works its way out, and you know, doesn't, there's no spike in cases, and hopefully, they, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be good. So I just you know, just gotta. Keep grinding away and, you know, back in the swing of things. Yeah. So let me ask you about that, Steve, because obviously if it wasn't for the eye injury, as you mentioned, you would have been back much earlier. And then this pandemic is something no one could have planned for, obviously. Uh, has it been frustrating, you know, dealing with the questions about, you know, when is Steve Bay coming back? Why isn't Steve Bay coming back? When is Steve going to fight DC? You hear it all the time, and I know you respond on Twitter, but is it frustrating just when you look at the sequence of events? Because if not for the eye injury, you probably would have fought in, I don't know, I'm just speculating here, like January or February. Uh, but obviously that pushed you back. And then again, no one can predict a freaking pandemic is going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what people want from me. I literally, everyone's like, you need to feed these two holes to vision. I'm like, how, how am I holding up the vision? And it's like, other guys are saying, like, well, we can train one well, Good for you. you. You live in a different state. You have different regulations. But, like, my coach, like, no joke, he shut his gym down. No, you know, I mean, he didn't take any dues. Like, he just straight, like, you know, no one's paying anything because, like, he's like, it's not fair to everyone. So anyway, they have like a bunch of stuff outside the gym and a couple people, I think it was like five or six people, I have no idea, were working out just together. They're even six feet apart and someone saw that and reported it and they got cited by the CDC. Really? So that's, how straight, that's how straight they are. So like everyone can just shut up because they're idiots. <laughs> wow. So he got reported. So, so, this, so this happened at, at Strong Style, they got reported. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh! Did they get fined? Like, is that how it works, or how does that work? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, fine. I, I don't know. Really, I don't know more into it. I haven't really talked to it. I, I think he got fined, but I think he, I think they threw it out. But cause he explained what happened, and you know. But yeah, he got he got fined and all that. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know, <laughs> listen, we're, you know, obviously we're in an unprecedented time, but I also, you know, one, one of the things that I, like, I get it, you know, as you said, everyone's in a different situation. I had this conversation with Aljamain Sterling when the whole outbreak first started, and he'd say, you know, where they're at in New York, like, you know, they're not going to be training. It's just too dangerous. It's just too much risk in a place like that to go through that. And, and you know, he's like, listen, it's not worth the risk of me getting ready right now to fight on short notice. This is not worth it. Obviously, you're preparing for arguably the biggest fight of your career, a trilogy against Daniel Cormier, a guy I know you have a lot of respect for, and obviously you want to be prepared for. Is it just, do you feel like it's just unfair to ask you to, you know, kind of put together a training camp in your basement uh, to get ready for a heavyweight title fight? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, apparently I'm not a champ, so, I mean, he wants to call his own shots and whatever, dude. I think mean, everyone else talking to, you know, saying I'm a whole, a whole vacate or defend him, like, Jesus, like, like, whatever, like, I, I can't make anyone happy or everyone happy, I, don't care at this point, like, stop crying. 
<laughs> well, the other thing is, obviously, August would be one year. We're talking about, obviously, where like Habib is at right now, and obviously he was affected similar to you with the pandemic and couldn't travel and things like that, and now you know, they're talking about him fighting Gaethje in September. That's one year. I mean, that's not. we're not even at a year yet, right? Like, is, that, is that the toughest part? And I get it. I get it. I know Francis Ngannou wants to fight for the title. I know Daniel wants to close out the trilogy, but we're not at a year yet. And I know, obviously, you want to be back sooner than this, but is that also like a tough part to deal with when it hasn't even been that, that time? Line yet? Yeah, I mean, it's like nothing. It was, it's like I didn't want to fight. I literally had a night injury that I couldn't, you know, do anything. And I, uh, you know, I mean, like, sorry. Um, I literally couldn't, like, yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't train. And then I started with training, and then the pandemic hit. Like, how's that my fault? Yeah. Yeah, when you hear, let me ask you specifically about Daniel Cormier, and I get it, you know, Daniel wants to retire, he wants to close out his career, and he wants to fight, I get it, you want to fight, you want to close out that part of your career, because obviously one more fight with Daniel Cormier, and then you move on beyond that, uh, but what what is your opinion of, like, his reaction to this whole deal, do you just kind of roll your eyes, do you, do you just kind of, you know, roll the punches and say this is just part of the sport, he's going to chatter, like, what what is your opinion of Daniel Cormier through all this? I, I don't care. I really don't care what his opinion is. He never did. Honestly, it's just, uh, <laughs> he says one thing and then contradicts himself all the time. So I don't know. Yeah. Is it, you know, when you, when you hear, I mean, obviously, you know, you pay attention to certain things, obviously, on, on the internet, things like that. Like when you hear guys, you know, talk about the frustration of the division. Is it is it just one of those things you have to kind of ignore at this point? Because obviously you're going to come back when you can come back. And as you've said numerous times, you want to fight. You just can't fight right now. Exactly. I mean, listen, once I can fight, I'm going to fight. There's no question. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the arguments, and I care, I don't want to, I don't want to put anything in anyone's mouth. I'll say it was Curtis Blades, but again, don't quote me on that because I can't remember if it was exactly him that said it. But one of the arguments that's been made is obviously everyone respects that you're a first responder. Everyone respects that you're a firefighter. But the argument was made that, you know, as a UFC heavyweight champion, you know, maybe you should focus on being the champion instead of being a firefighter. What do you say to those people? Like, yeah. What, do you, what like, do you say to that? He's irrelevant right now. I don't know. I don't really care what he thinks either. He's I, yeah, just like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm, we're in a pandemic. Like, what, what else do you want me to say? I don't know what else. Like, even if I was first responder, I still couldn't train. So shut up. <laughs> is that is like, that is that stop, what's getting stop lost? Crying, dude. Is that what's getting lost in all this? Even if you weren't a firefighter, if you were just sitting at home chilling with your wife and kid, you still wouldn't be training right now. There's no way. I mean, what can I train? Yeah. Like with partners and everything like that. I really worship. You're in a state of how everything shut down. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And and I, and I get like and, and that's the and I and I know you hear the you hear the stories you hear the question of Dana saying you know, the possibility of being stripped and I don't want to bring up bad history or anything but this is not the first time that has been mentioned to you about the possibility of stripping your title and I know as a fighter as a champion you got to be like come on this again uh, it's, uh, nothing new yeah nothing new I mean whatever <laughs> so where yeah. You know. So where we sit right now, as we mentioned, May 26th, you're going to start reopening the gyms in Ohio. But again, let's be clear, this is not full reopening. You're not going to be able to go in and, and from my, again, my understanding, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, you know, no contact is basically what I've heard. You know, pad where you can hit pads, you can, you know, do things at the yeah. gym, but you got to be socially distant. And again, maybe eventually those restrictions will be lifted in June or July. But as I know, they're pretty strict in Ohio so far. Uh what, where are you at right now in terms of your timeline? You know, are you still kind of in that holding pattern? Like once they can fully reopen the gyms, then you'll set a timeline for your return. Yeah, you know, my team, we're, we're talking to USC, and we're gonna figure out a good date. You know, that's what we're doing. It's like it's not like I'm not figuring anything out. We're trying to figure something out. So once that we, we find a good date to figure out what's a good one to go with, we're gonna go. We're yeah. ready. Yeah. What I was getting at when we when we kind of got cut off there was just basically your your timeline for return. Have you kind of thought about that? Like what you want to do? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, no, but like, like I said, this, this, this crazy pandemic, you know, I mean, it just, uh, um, it's, it's not just because like, uh, you know, you, you have no idea when my gym's going to open, but like, I mean, I want to try to get back as soon as I can, you know, I'm not trying to like, not hold on, like, you know, I want to fight. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think that that's the thing that keeps getting missed. You want to fight. You just want to be prepared to fight. Exactly. Like, it's not like I'm going for a three round fight. I'm going five rounds for heavyweight title. 
you know what I'm saying? And I'm fighting a really good fighter. I, you know, I want to make sure I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, to that point, I'll ask you this question. It was raised up by a couple other guys, and and you know, in the interim, would you be would you be opposed, or would you have a problem if they had crowned an interim champion while you were out? I mean, you know, I'm not my say. I mean, like, I'm not like it's, it's not my say. I mean, like, you can do what you want. Yeah. Last thing, I'll ask you about this. You know, I know you as a fighter, you've always told me, you'll fight whoever they put in front of you. It doesn't really matter. So let me ask your opinion about another fight. Have you seen this stuff online about John Jones and Francis Ngannou? Yeah, man. I mean, that's maybe a good fight. You know, interesting matchups. Obviously, you fought yeah. Francis. Do you think that would be a tough matchup for John coming to heavyweight? Yeah, I think it's any, anyone fighting him is a tough fight because, you know, he's a, so explosive he hits super hard. You know I mean? That's the one equalizer, man. You know, he might not be as technically as sound as John Jones, but he does have power. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I think anyone, you know, you're the one guy who kind of figured out the Francis puzzle. Uh, no offense to Derek Lewis, of course, but you're the one guy who really figured out the puzzle, but nobody else else has. So as great as John Jones is, I don't think that's a foregone conclusion. He goes in there and wins that fight. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think he'd win. You know, I would get a great game plan, but like I said, you know, just, it's, you, anything can happen, man. You're wearing small gloves, heavyweight division, dude throwing bombs, I mean, anything can happen, honestly. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So in your perfect world, before the end of the year, you're going to be defending your title against Daniel Cormier, and then we can finally put all this behind us. Yeah, I know for sure. I'll be fighting for the end of the year, no question. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 100%. Yeah. Well, Steve Bay, I won't keep you any longer. I wanted to wrap up from our, our conversation from earlier. I appreciate you taking the time. I'm glad the family's doing safe, man. And you're, I know you hear this a lot, but I sincerely mean it, man. You're doing incredible work, man. I, you, you're doing what a lot of people, I would never do it. I'm not going to lie to you and say I'd be a firefighter or a paramedic. I couldn't do it, man. What you're doing, especially in a situation like this, man, takes a lot of bravery and a lot of courage. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm actually, yeah, now I'm at the station. That's <laughs> the vacuum in the background, but, uh, but yeah, you know, yeah, I appreciate everything. It means a lot. And, I, you know, it's always, they show us on my side. Uh, you know, be safe out there and uh, God bless. Absolutely, Steve. We will talk soon, my friend. Probably, man. I'll talk to you later.